Hi, it's Holide again. So this video is the last in a series on how to write quantitative reports. It covers the results and the discussion. It then touches on AP referencing, although that's a whole video in itself, and then the appendix. Right, so just a quick reminder of the overall structure of a report. You've got the title, the abstract and the introduction, which were covered in the first video. And then you've got the method, which is made up of participants, materials, design, procedure and scoring, which were covered in the second video. And then you've got the results, discussion, references and the appendix, which will be covered in this video. Right, so straight after the methods, you have the results section. This is a summary of all your findings. Although it is optional, you should really begin with a description of the analysis that you have used, then go into descriptive data, so the means, the standard deviations, that kind of thing. If you have a lot of statistics, it might be worth putting it all in a graph or table, but ensure that this is an APA style. Graphs and tables need full titles and axes need to be labelled. Graphs also need to have error bars. However, Please note that graphs and tables are supplementary, so you will also have to report the findings in sentence form. Of course, again this is an APA format. Your research method lectures and your textbooks cover this. When writing the results, you will need to include the results of any statistical test that you have run. Explain what these tests mean in relation to the experiment and your initial predictions, but you are not discussing them here, you are just stating them. Remember, this all needs to be in APA format. For example, there should be no zero before the decimal point in correlation coefficients or probability values. So as you can see on the screen, it is correct to report R equals 0.32 or p is less than 0 0.001, but incorrect to report it as r equals 0 0.32, or p is less than 0 0.001. Remember when I said that the graphs and tables are supplementary? You really do need to ask yourself, if the graphs or tables were removed, could the reader still understand the results from what I have written? If not, you haven't included enough information on how you did the analysis, what the results are and what they mean. There are a couple of things that you should avoid doing in the results section. Firstly, don't copy and paste tables straight from SPSS. You need to reformat the tables using the APA guidelines. Essentially, the one thing to remember is that APA tables do not have vertical lines. Secondly, do not include raw data in your report. If your tutor does ask you to include some raw data, put this in the appendix. Thirdly, don't present the same data in both a graph and a table. Choose one. Fourthly, don't discuss or interpret your results in this section. Save that for the discussion. And lastly, don't overcomplicate the results section. That's it. Just don't overthink it. Right, so next up we have the discussion. Last but not least, so a discussion should be started by reminding the participants of what the hypothesis was and then summarise the results without using any numbers. Within the results section, the results are described but not explained. You should explain them here in the discussion. The findings should be related back to the hypothesis and the aims. Did you find what you were looking for? Here, you should include references to studies that your findings support or oppose. Then you should discuss the implications of your findings. What can people do with this information? Are there any businesses or organisations that need to take these findings on board? When you're discussing all of this, you need to keep in mind and note any potential biases and threats to internal and statistical validity. Are there any ways that the validity has been compromised? This needs to be noted here. Talk about the size of your sample and whether it is sufficient and provides good sampling validity. 
leading on from the population, think and discuss about whether your findings are generalizable. Talking about the limitations of your study is also really important. What can be improved? This needs to be specific to your study and not generic. But don't criticize your work to the point where it sounds invalid. Just simply state what could be improved and how to improve it. This is also a good place to provide examples of other studies that have used methods that you think you could adopt next time. Towards the end of your discussion, you can then start to discuss areas for future research. So what research now needs to take place based on what you have found? Then finally, conclude by summarising the main points and the implications. Okay, so that's it for the discussion on two references and the appendix. Now that the main part of the report is complete, you will need to make sure that you have written a complete reference list. This needs to be in the seventh edition APA format. In addition to this, if you decide to include an appendix, each new document in the appendix should start on a new page and should be labeled with a letter. So as you can see on the screen, appendix A, appendix B, and so on. They should each appear in the order that you mention them within the report. Things that could potentially go in the appendix are the full instructions that you provided to the participants, the full list of stimuli, master copies of the questionnaire, consent forms, and so on. You could also include any diagrams, sketches of programs or unusual equipment that you have used. And that's it, the report is now complete. But remember, at this point, this is when you need to start thinking about writing the abstract, which is the first thing in the first video that was discussed. So remember, you write the abstract last once everything else is complete. And that's it. So as per usual, your academic mentors are here to support you. So if you have any drafts or would like further support in writing quantitative reports, please do give us a shout. Our emails are on the screen as well as the courses that we support. Hope to hear from you soon. Bye.